Hi, I'm Nico from Talktobers, and in this video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of a dashboard that we created for reporting on demographics. It pulls data from Google Analytics and includes uh, some geographic data, gender, age, uh, device type, and uh, I like including it in my dashboards for a few reasons. One, we do a lot of audience targeting and it's a great way to keep tabs on how different audience characteristics are performing and uh, also just for getting a feeling for who's coming to a website, who's converting, um, and uh, that can help uh, think about content, messaging. So uh, clients really like it too. This data is available in some form in Google Analytics, but including it in a Data Studio dashboard makes it a lot more accessible, and you'll see how uh, our dashboard kind of pulls it all together in a nice way. So let's get started. So here's the dashboard. Uh, let's take a quick look around. Up here, the first thing you see is the overall conversion rate by gender and age. And I'll talk through how each one of these components is built in a second. Below that is conversion rate by DMA. Uh, and a DMA, in Google Analytics, it's called a metro, but it's pretty close to the same thing as a as a DMA, which is an old marketing term that comes from designated market areas, which is uh, in TV buying and, and I guess mostly TV, maybe radio, designated market areas were like part, they were like metros, but a lot of times they're bigger. If you look in this map, you can see they're a little bigger. Um, then on the right hand side, some traffic numbers. So on the left are conversion rates, uh, relative conversion rates, and on the right side are traffic numbers by device, gender, and age. For you to get started, what you'll want to do is up here create a copy of this dashboard. And it uses, so when you create a copy, you're going to have to specify a data connection. And the data connection that I'm using is the Google Analytics demo account, which is something that Google makes available. And if you search for the Google Analytics demo account, uh, you'll find a link in Google, you'll find a link to a help page that shows you how to, to get access. Once you've uh, click to get access for your login, you'll be able to connect to it uh, as, as, a, as a connection in Data Studio. Um, the demo account uses the Google Merchandise Store uh, is, the, is the demo account, so it is in fact live data, so if you're not already familiar with it, it's, it's really super cool. You're, uh, you get to see Google Analytics in a live account with a bunch of uh, enhanced e-commerce data and, and goals and events and everything set up so it's a great it's a great tool for demonstration so I won't go into that part of setting up a dashboard there's a lot of resources that can tell you how to copy a dashboard and connect up to it yourself but I will walk through the specifics of this dashboard so I'm gonna click to edit Okay, so let's go piece by piece. So up here on the upper left, overall conversion rate by gender and age. Um, let me, so one thing I wanna talk about is, is, okay, why did I pick overall conversion rate? A lot of times when people report on this data, they report on page views or sessions and you could do that and, and you might want to make just like a gender and age dashboard and, and have a couple of different views of that data. The reason I like conversion rate is that when you're doing audience targeting, so you might be creating an audience in Google Ads or Facebook or somewhere else, or like in Google Ads, you can do uh, bid modifiers. You can say, I want to, I want to pay a little more for this audience. It's really helpful to know the differences in performance. So this is showing relative differences in performance. Um, so you can see 
like between male and female, 18 to 24. The overall conversion rate for males is 16.3 and females 14.3 and so on. So um, I love this, this heat map view. So what this is, is a, is a pivot table where on the left, so for the row dimension, I've got gender, and for the column dimension, I have age, and then the metric I'm looking at is goal conversion rate, for the reasons I described, uh, and that is the conversion rate for all goals. You might, maybe you don't have enough goal conversion data for that to be useful, or maybe there's a different, like you're more focused on engagement. I guess the main point is just that from a performance standpoint, absolute numbers doesn't really tell you much. Like you might have a lot more people coming in a certain age group, but they don't necessarily perform any better. For my purposes, I like knowing differences in performance. So if you're more focused on engagement, then you might want to look at time on site, um, pages per visit, that kind of thing. So, <clears throat> the, I mean, that's about it. I guess the only other thing that I would call attention to is you'll notice in my dashboards, I like a really clean look. And so I'll tend to turn off certain, like, like in this case, I've done something a little bit sneaky. So the table header uh, I made the font as small as I could, but then I made the color of the font the same color as the background of the page. So um, just to make it disappear. <laughs> so if you, um, there, well, I can't highlight it, but anyway, there is in fact a description of what this table is. I added my own text just because I, I feel like it gives me a little bit more control, gives it a little bit cleaner look. And you'll notice that in a lot of cases, I actually suppress the built-in labeling or do like I did there and make the, the font the same color as the backgrounds. Uh, and then I add my own labels just because I, I think it ends up in a, a nicer looking dashboard, but that's not, that's not super important. So then uh, this, this one is really similar. So I mentioned before the, it's, I say DMA, Google Analytics calls it a Metro. Um, just to give you a feeling, like I live in Denver and down here, let's see, click over here. Now it's going to do this little move icon. But anyway, the DMA for Denver actually covers like more than half of Colorado. It's kind of ridiculous. It's not what most people would think of as a metro. You could also pick city as the, so when if I click on here, you'll see that I can change that dimension to, I could change the city or state if I wanted. Um, I like this just because it covers the whole map and it gives you a feeling. So again, this is a, this is a uh, density map. So the darker areas are where there are higher conversion rates. So I like seeing the um, uh, performance that way. If if in this case I had visits or sessions, well, guess what? Think Texas, California, New York, Florida, because there's more people. Most of the time, you're going to see that they are. That's where most of your traffic is coming from. Um, so, yeah, one I'll just highlight one other little thing that I did here. Uh, I so you can say like in the geo map chart, you can say. Like your max color, your mid color, and your min color. And because I've got this sort of slick, uh, I'm using the, if you look at the um, theme, I've got this simple dark theme, which is just one of the standard themes. And I like it because the graphs and everything really pop. Um, so to get the map to fit in, I to fit that theme, I actually made the min color this gray color, uh, just because it, I don't know, it suits the, the theme a little better. So, all right, on the right hand side, there's um, a few things I'll point out. So this is just a bar graph. 
uh, as I mentioned before, I got rid of the uh, the y-axis and x-axis labels. Actually, these are just graphical right here that I've put in. Um, the other thing that I would point out is that uh, I've done something here that I think is really useful when you're showing bar graphs for this kind of data, which is the metric that I'm reporting on. So my dimension is a device category, and I'm sorting by device category. I'll get to that in a second. So this metric, one of the things that you can do, which is super handy, is the comparison calculation. I can choose percent of total. Uh, ordinarily, it defaults to... Um, to no comparison, so it's just absolute numbers. Uh, and so that would just show, uh, in this case, how many sessions. Uh, but I really like being able to see the uh, relative numbers and, I mean, the relative percentages. So I think that's a more interesting way to look at it. Um, so here you can see almost let's say, sort of two thirds are desktop. Um, and again, this is the Google Merchandise Store. Looking at the data, it seems like it's mostly employees uh, purchasing stuff, and my guess is they get some amount of credit or something in the store because uh, it really is mostly employees. Um, and uh, so I guess if it's employees and they're often coming from work, it's probably why it's such a, a large percentage of desktop, um, which if you look at a lot of website data nowadays, tend to see more mobile traffic than desktop. So. Um, the other thing, so I, I mentioned before, so I have the sort order as device category. Uh, a lot of times default sorts are based on numbers, not, um, not a, a categorical, so, categorical sort. The reason that I have this this way is because I've put in these graphics. The device category is never going to change, uh, at least not until some new kind of device is invented. So... I don't have to worry about my labels matching up to the wrong column because it's sorting by device category and it's sorting alphabetic. So I have desktop, mobile, and then tablet. So um, alphabetically sorted. And then these images are just little icons that I imported as graphics. Uh, I think it, I don't know, makes it, makes it look, um, it's a little nicer to look at where you can put visual elements in there. I think that's always a plus. So... <clears throat> traffic by gender. Um, I won't. Oh, I'm do, using a lot of similar techniques here. Uh, same kind of deal. I've got percent of total for sessions. Um, but there's one other thing that I want to um, call attention to. So when I created this graph in the first place, it did not add these numbers. These percentages didn't add up to 100. So you see here it's 66 percent, 33 percent, adding up to 100. Um, the and I guess, so for at least the time being, Google Analytics requires uh, that people be classified as male or female. There's no other gender options. Uh, but if you're used to looking at Google Analytics data, you know that that classification, uh, they, they can't classify all users. And so there's always an unknown number which tends to be pretty high or you look and you look at the percentages and you're like oh this adds up to uh, not um, 100 percent in fact usually it's less than 50 percent that they can classify as male or female so to, to deal with that because that would result in these numbers not adding up to 100 i created this filter so well, i'll have a look let's have a look at this filter so it's users identified as male or female. So and and so what I have is include gender, and I've got regular expression match male, and then that's a pipe character in between and female. So in the world of regular expressions, we won't get into all the all the advanced things you can do with regular expressions, but that that pipe character, that vertical line, is is means an or so it's going to match if it finds the word male or female uh, in the gender so it won't match to unknown so it's only including data for male and female it's not including unknown data and by adding that filter it now my percentages add up to a hundred and you could say well I want to know what percentage of, of people are unknown well you could 
you could, uh, well, if you, interestingly in this bar chart, if you do that, it's not actually going to show a column for unknown, but these percentages won't add up. Um, so to me, I guess I would say that it's, it's pretty representative. It's not perfect data. That data comes from mostly behavioral characteristics is what they use to determine whether a user is male or female, uh, which is an inexact science anyway. Um, so to me, it's good enough to know that of people they can measure, about two thirds are male and a third are female. The last thing I'd point out is for traffic by age. I'm do, I've actually got the same filter applied because that data basically comes from the same source. And so when they don't know whether a person is male or female, they also don't know if uh, what age they are. And so I applied that same filter um, to, let's see. Uh, actually, I didn't, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to apply the user identified as male or female. Um, yeah, and it actually did change a little bit. So so now these numbers will add up to 100%. Um, and again, if you look at the sort order, it's I'm sorting by age. That numbers that's not going to change. Uh, and so I've got my little graphical label, labels, um, which... I think look nicer than the labels they have. If you're looking at this and you're like, geez, do you really need two decimal places of precision? Uh, there, I could not find a way to change the precision in a bar chart um, from what it is. They, I, I found some people talking about like you could create your own calculated dimensions or calculated metrics and uh, affect the decimal precision there, um, which sounded, uh, honestly, it sounded more complicated than I was willing to do to get rid of decimal places. Um, and maintainability, I think, matters. Like, I, I do use calculated metrics uh, a fair amount, but only, I guess, not for something like that. I mean, it does, if somebody else looks at it, it can make it a little more confusing to maintain, so. So here you go. Uh, hopefully it's useful to you as is, but I wanted to walk through how I'm doing some of what I'm doing um, because um, you probably are going to want to change at least a few things here and there. So here you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that helpful. Uh, I love questions, comments, so uh, feel free to shoot me a comment below or come to the toctobers.com website, click on contact and send us a note. Love to hear from you. Thanks.